how high is too high for guys like DeAndre Hopkins and Jacoby Myers in week seven? Going to talk about our top 36 wide receivers and more coming at you right now. TFA fam, appreciate you rocking with us. Let's go ahead and just dive right into our wide receiver rankings for week seven. Kicking things off with Jamar Chase in number one, followed by Tyreek Hill, Devontae Adams, CeeDee Lamb, Debo Samuel, Amonra St. Brown, Mike Evans, Mike Williams, Michael Pittman, Jalen Waddell, DeAndre Hopkins at 11, and Chris Godwin at 12. Okay, there's obviously a boatload of people out there who have been waiting on this moment like Jennifer Lopez, to just slide DeAndre Hopkins right into their starting lineups. I have him as a wide receiver one this week as well, but like I'm I'm a little worried that he might not get his full complement of snaps, but what do you have to say about D-Hop going up against the Saints on Thursday night? Well, I, I'm sure the, the Cardinals are happy to see him back with the Marquise Brown, Hollywood Brown injury. Now, now that injury is not as bad as what at first speculated. It was thought it maybe could be season ending, but he's still probably going to miss six weeks. And so he's going to be out for a while. So they're getting DeAndre Hopkins back at the perfect time. And I really felt like getting him back with Hollywood Brown would really open up this offense because Kyler Murray has not looked very good. I, as the Cardinals haven't looked very good at all. But, you know, I, I think, you know, we can go back and look a little bit at how he did last year and, you know, it, it wasn't great for DeAndre Hopkins last year. Uh, we'll see if he can bounce back a little bit because, you know, even though he played in limited games last year, only played in 10 games, uh, he only received a 20% target share in that offense, which is much lower than what people were expecting. He averaged about 14.7 fantasy points per game. Uh, he came in around 29th in yards per out run. So he didn't really look like the, really kind of the same guy as he was. He did have some uh, some spike weeks, but... For the most part, he wasn't the same DeAndre Hopkins, but the Saints have not been very good so far uh, against the pass this year, especially opposing wide receivers have really had their way. Number one wide receivers, we just saw Jamar Chase go absolutely nuclear against them and really bounce back in a big way. So I do think DeAndre Hopkins steps right in this week, especially with uh, losing Hollywood Brown. I think then that you look at him as being a pretty solid option. Even if he doesn't play a full complement of snaps, he's still going to see a lot of targets. I think anywhere from eight to ten targets is fair for DeAndre Hopkins. So, uh, you know, he's going to be well rested after this, this suspension. It's not like he's coming off an injury or anything like that. So, I think you can start DeAndre Hopkins with, with relative confidence. Having Marcus Lattimore likely out definitely helps as well. It's going to move on to our wide receiver twos for week seven. Kicking things off there is DK Metcalf, followed by Amari Cooper, Corlin Sutton. Christian Kirk, Tyler Lockett, Keenan Allen, T. Higgins, Jacoby Myers at 20, Al Lazard, Drake London, Brandon Ayuk, and Chris Olave at wide receiver 24. Uh, just one guy I want to talk about here in the wide receiver twos, and that is Al Lazard, who has quietly put together three really nice weeks in a row, despite this offense being pretty bleh, if we are being honest. But Lazard has finished no worse than wide receiver 18 in PPR scoring the past three weeks. At least eight targets in all three. He has touchdowns in back-to-back -back weeks. Now gets a matchup against a Washington secondary that's 19th in pass DVOA and has given up the seventh most fantasy points per game to the position while being pretty respectable on the ground. And now with Randall Cobb being out, I don't necessarily think that Lazard is all of a sudden going to come out and see, you know, 12 plus targets on a weekly basis, but with all the bye weeks hitting, I think he's a really solid wide receiver two option. First, I want to hit on Amari Cooper. Uh, he has been really kind of another guy that's kind of quietly just kind of flown under the radar. He's been pretty solid for the most part this year. Has a 28% target share in the offense, 11th in market share of air yards, 15th in deep targets, 11th in red zone targets on the year, 31 catches, 348 yards and four touchdowns. He has 15 fantasy points per game. He is 31st in yards per run, and Baltimore has actually allowed the fifth most fantasy points to wide receivers, second most receiving yards, sixth most receiving touchdowns to wide receivers on the season. So Amari Cooper is a really solid play this week against Baltimore. Again, if they're likely going to be trailing, they're going to have to you know throw the ball here and play catch up. So Amari Cooper, I think, is a really solid option. And then I'm going to go with T. Higgins, and I'm sure fantasy managers are a little uh, frustrated with him. He hasn't been great so far to start the year. He did return to action last week. He only has a 16% target share, but some of that that's weighing him down is that game there. He uh, played, but and then he missed the entire 
uh, rest of the game. So I think that brings his numbers down a little bit. 12.4 fantasy points per game, but he is 18th in yards per route run and 12th in yards after the catch. So all the efficiency numbers are definitely there for him. And I think this uh, we, we might have seen this passing offense kind of click. We saw it last week. You know, with with Joe Burrow had his biggest game of the year against the Saints. Now this week they get the Atlanta Falcons. They're 23rd in pass DVOA. Atlanta allows the six most fantasy points to wide receivers, six most receiving yards, and fourth most receiving touchdowns. So this is a very very good matchup. Pretty good bounce back spot for T Higgins this week. And he, again, another option for people if they're looking to buy low. I think T Higgins would be a great option. It is Tuesday whenever we're recording this, so we'll have to see how the injury report plays out. But A.J. Terrell and Casey Hayward did go uh, down with injuries in that last game as well, which would just obviously just open things up more for that Bengals offense. On to our wide receiver threes for week seven. We have Deontay Johnson at wide receiver 25. Just for the record, I don't have him ranked that high. Juju Smith-Schuster at wide receiver 26. Curtis Samuel, Brandon Cooks, Alec Pierce, George Pickens, Romeo Dobbs, Rondell Moore, Terry McLaurin, Jerry Judy, DJ Moore, and Michael Gallup as the wide receiver 36. Two guys I just want to touch on real quick. Rondell Moore, for everything Kev was saying about the, the matchup with D-Hop, uh, you can say here about Rondell Moore as well. Has 13 catches for 117 yards on 18 targets the past two weeks. Not lighting the world on fire, but his situation just improved for sure. And then Michael Gallup. Uh, this one is really about the matchup and the potential return of Dak Prescott at quarterback. You know, Gallup hasn't done much since returning three weeks ago, but he does have a 22% target share, 26% of the air yards as well. And he saw his uh, snaps get bumped all the way up to 80% last week. The Lions are hashtag bad at defense. They're 32nd and past the VOA, and they have given up the eighth most fantasy points per game to wide receivers and the Cowboys have the second highest implied point total as it stands right now on the week so I think you could do worse for sure especially with the bye weeks that we have yeah I think uh you know with Dak Prescott returning you know I think we saw Cooper Rush kind of uh turn back into a pumpkin a little bit it was funny there we had the other people that were trying to debate was Cooper Rush should should he uh keep the starting job over Dak Prescott I'm like stop I want to hit on Brandon Ayuk and uh, they get the Kansas City Chiefs this week. Now, I will mention the Chiefs are getting back Trent McDuffie, which is going to be a big boost to their secondary. We saw them kind of get a little bit torched uh, recently, uh, but that's because they're playing, you know, seventh round and fourth round picks, Joshua Williams and Jalen Watson. But now with Trent McDuffie, their first round pick, somebody that a lot of people uh, really like coming out in the draft. But either way, I still think Brandon Ayuk is definitely a really solid play this week, coming off his best game of the season, where he scored 28.3 PPR points. And so far on the year, he's still been really efficient. He is 19th in yards after the catch, 30th in yards per route run. So Brandon Ayuk has been really solid with a 23% target share in this offense. He also has 12.6 fantasy points per game. And uh, the Chiefs have really struggled to stop opposing wide receivers on the season. So uh, this is a game that they're going to have to throw the ball to keep up with the Chiefs. We know this. They're not going to be able to run the football like they want. And so I think Brandon Ayuk is a very solid kind of uh, low-end wide receiver two, high-end wide receiver three this week. And then the other guy I want to hit on is in the same game, Juju Smith-Schuster. He is coming off his best game as well of the season, uh, scoring 22.3 fantasy points, which was the seventh most last week. We finally kind of saw what why the Chiefs brought him here. His yards after the catch ability uh, was, full, was fully on display last week. And this, this San Francisco uh, defense is absolutely ravaged with injuries right now. Jimmy Ward is questionable. Eric Armstead, Nick Bosa, Shavarius Ward. Emmanuel Mosley's on IR. Uh, Javon Kinlaw is on injured reserve. Like this defense is just absolutely destroyed right now with injuries. So I do like Juju Smith Schuster as a pretty solid wide receiver three this week. Let's wrap it up with some guys who are outside of our top 36. Uh, somebody I like, Wondell Robinson. Finally saw him get on the field after uh, his week one was cut short. And I think if you pick him up, this week, uh, you know, off waivers, you can plug him in as a deep flex option if you need to. He only played 15 snaps last week, but he saw four targets while he was on the field. Now gets a matchup against the Jacksonville Jaguars, who've given up some production to wide receivers. I think their total numbers look better than what they what they actually are. You know, week one, all three Washington receivers had double-digit fantasy points. 
Ashton Dolan went five for 79 without Michael Pittman in week two. Nico Collins went four for 65. Then obviously uh, last week Pittman went off and then both Paris Campbell and Alec Pierce caught TDs. And with, you know, talking about being ravaged with injuries, look no further than this uh, Giants offense. So this could be a situation where we see Wondell Robinson uh, get a little bit more involved this week. So I think he makes for an interesting, like I said, like deeper flex option. The guy that I like is Nico Collins. We started to see him really start to play a little bit more. Uh, the first three weeks, he played roughly around 68% of the snaps. Now week four, he played 75% of the snaps. And week five, he played 82% of the snaps. And he also saw 11 targets over those of those two games as well. He has, has scored double-digit fantasy points in both of those games. He's kind of the reason that Brandon Cooks hasn't really had the kind of season that people were expecting him to have because he's starting to get more and more involved in this offense. Right now, he is 11th in average depth of target. He is 30th in yards per route run. He is also uh, eighth in yards per reception on the season. So uh, right now he has a 32.7% uh, market share of the air yards for this offense, which is 23rd. He has 15 catches for 272 yards, and he looks like he's just going to continue to get more and more in this offense. But I think this is a really good matchup for him against the Raiders. They're, they're eight-point dogs. They're going to have to be throwing the ball a lot. So Nico Collins, I think, is a pretty solid option for fantasy owners if you're looking for a flex option this week. Uh, somebody you could plug in and really somebody you could pick up off waivers because he's kind of widely available. So I really like Nico Collins this week as an option. You know, I think some of the, a few of the other options uh, that, that you could be looking at, I think Devin Duvernay would definitely be in play, whether whether Rashad Bateman plays or not. I think he's in play on the opposite side. Donovan Peoples-Jones, I, I think also makes some sense. And then Tyquan Thornton for the Patriots kind of came in this past week and, you know, had a really big game on really kind of limited opportunities. And they're a team that has a lot of injuries right now. Kendrick Bourne left that game. Nelson Aguilar has been dealing with injuries. So, the, And this is a team that doesn't have a lot of weapons. But last week, he only played 50% of the snaps. He saw five targets, two inside the red zone. He had one uh, receiving touchdown, one rushing touchdown, four catches for 37 yards for 21.3. So Tyquan Thornton could also be a guy we look at against Chicago. Uh, Chicago secondary really isn't anything that I'm all that concerned with. And if they're going to get creative with him and utilize him as a runner as well, I think that only bodes well for him. So I do think Tyquan Thornton is also kind of another option that people could be looking at that for people that are flying under the radar. People forget this dude had rated a 4 to 8 40 uh, at the combine. He has a 93rd percentile speed score, a 90th percentile burst score. So dude has is a absolute blazer. Um, out there. Yes, he's 6'2", 183, but that kind of reminds me a little bit like of a Devontae Smith-type body build. So Tyquan Thornton, uh, I think, uh, at least is an option this week. And we are on our way to 4K subs. So if you could hit us with a sub and a like while you're here, we would definitely appreciate it. Any questions you have, go ahead and drop them in the comments below, or you can join our absolutely free fantasy football Discord. Talking all things fantasy over there, prop bets, dynasty, Devi, redraft, you name it, we're talking about it. Hope you guys have a great week seven, and we'll talk to you soon.